Palace Armory, the King's House. Okay, with what you just saw there in the intro of the video, uh, lots of things going on, and that's why we like to uh, show you the things uh, so you have the visual, and we have props as well to show you that it is in the King's House, the King's Palace, where the armor is kept. Now, very important and significant time we're in where the king overcomes the enemies. Michael and his angels cast out the dragon, 
Okay, we know that the Antichrist figure, his uh, dominion is taken. Okay, and the dominion is given to the saints of the Most High. And so Christ, who has spoiled principalities and powers, okay, and made a show of them openly, okay, so when he overcomes Haman, he overcomes him and takes the spoils. He spoiled the principalities. What that means, he takes his, the things that he had, the weapons of his warfare, he takes them from the enemy and gives them to the saints. And that is for the great war, when Christ will ride on his white horse and with the saints with him. So what do they have? They have the ancient style of weapons, the whole armor of God you see in Ephesians 6, but that is only the foot soldiers. So what we're going to suggest is that the enemy had held certain things, uh, treasures, whatever you want to call them, in a house, in a palace. Christ overcame him, and when he did, he shifts that and gives that to the saints in the great war and conflict, okay, at the end of the apocalypse, okay? So, that's what we're suggesting, and this happens in a building in the Millennial Temple. That's correct. So, this is memorialized in the 1,000-year reign of Christ, where we believe it's suggesting the king's house from Song of Solomon is decorated with the armaments, that's what we showed you. In the intro of the video, you could see there's shields. There's different types of shields. We have shield, the shields in a blog post. But in this one, we're trying to explain that once Christ overcomes, he issues the horses, um, the white garments, okay, and the weapons for his army in Revelation 19, okay? So, as such... Yes, there is a building in the temple complex of the king's house which memorializes this event. Okay, after the thousand years, then the uh, Satan is loose from the bottomless pit and there's Gog Magog war and there's another war. So it's also in the king's house so as to uh, be a reminder of the prophecy that he will once again surround Jerusalem. And when he does, uh, Yah will call down fire and destroy him and the rest of the wicked and sinners that went up against Jerusalem at the end of the millennium. But bef before the millennium begins, we have this war, and we have the issuing of the armaments. That's what we are showing you. Every Everything we showed you, the uh, trumpet. See if we can do a trumpet blast. All right. We have the trumpet. We have the swords. We have the shields. Okay. And so we have many of those things here, which we're, we're going to show you. Okay. But let's take a look at how we know the palace in the king's house is an armory, okay? Well, it says it in Song of Solomon. It's, we're, it's Song of Solomon that we're basically shown the Tower of, of David, okay, is an armory. It's Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 4. The Tower of David is built as an armory. And then it goes on to describe the shields, okay? You can see we got shields up there, shields here. Okay, so it describes a couple types of shields, okay? Septuagint has one of those types as a arrow, okay? So we do have uh, many of the things of the whole armor of God. It's not just the foot soldiers, but in Song of Solomon, yes, swords, chariots, shields, arrows, banners, um, army, and chorus, uh, feet shod with preparation gospel, and there it has its sandals and garments, all in the Song of Solomon. But David, okay, the Tower of David, okay, the King's Tower, the uh, Christ sitting on the throne of David in the millennium, the Tower of David is described here um, as an armory. And it's, it also says it's a tower of ivory. And its gate is Bath Ribim, a tower of Lebanon, which looks towards Damascus. Then it says the king is held in galleries, or galleries are pillars, okay? So we get the different names of the different towers here. I don't know if you noticed it. We have four towers, and that's what we have is four. It, the whole building is, is called a tower, but then there are even taller sections of it, which are the towers, and we get the names, the Tower of David, uh, Tower of Ivory, uh, Gate of Bathrobim. When you There's a gate when you go in and enter, 
uh, there's the Tower of Lebanon, which looks towards Damascus, okay? So again, what is happening is this is what uh, is, is the end result of the spoiling of the principalities and powers. This is what we can see in Luke 11. We know Luke is uh, parabolic to the fulfillment of Christ in his second coming as well. And here we see uh, him say he spoils principalities and powers. We know this is a type in Haman. So we know this is happening. The strong man armed keeps his palace. Okay, when the strong man is armed, he keeps his palace. He keeps his armaments in what? A palace. He is armed. His goods are at peace. Okay, so when the strong man is armed, he's, uh, he keeps his palace. So he's keeping and protecting the place of his uh, weapons and his goods are at peace. But when a stronger than he comes and overcomes him. So this is Christ overcoming uh, Haman, Antichrist, the beast, all of the adversaries in Revelation, Mystery Babylon. Okay, he overcomes him. He takes all his armor. Now, all armor here is, of course, the same word we get in Ephesians 6, where we get the whole armor of God, okay, uh, panoplia, okay? So we get panoplia here. He takes all his army, takes all the armaments, okay? He takes everything, the shields, the swords, the helmets, all right? Um, and then it says he divides the spoils. So when Christ spoils the enemy, Okay, he takes his armaments, he divides the spoils amongst his military, okay, amongst those in the battle, in the fight, okay? So, what is, what is the whole armor of God? All right, well, we got some of it here. We have uh, um, World War II style um, helmets. Isn't that amazing, the place where I'm in, the different things, that props that we have? Okay, so we have those, these old style helmets, it's a little small for me, but I mean, this is, this is real. These are the things that, that, uh, you know, people fought with back in the day and, uh, we have them here. Okay. Um, uh, helmets of salvation. All right. We got helmets of salvation. We showed you the trumpet. All right. Uh, the trumpet in its role. We got a blog post on the trumpet. You know, we have the sword. Okay. There's different types of sword. Uh, in, in Greek, there's a machara. It's kind of like where we get the word machete in English. It's the smaller sword. Okay. And then there's another one that's longer. It's called the broadsword. Okay. So the swords held in the armory. All right. So we get the helmets. Okay. You could see all this displayed in the king's house. We showed you the shields. Okay. Um, the trumpets. The, uh, there's, there would be chariots. Okay. Um, and of course in Revelation 19, the king comes on his white horse and those that are with him follow him on white horses. So there's horses, there's chariots, there's bows, there's arrows, um, there's everything. Now let's remember our king's house is patterned after the palace in Shushan. And you can see our footprint here is an exact uh, match to that of the palace at Shushan, it's just scaled down just a little bit. So the story of Esther is very significant for us because it is a type of Lord Jesus Christ sitting on his throne in the millennial kingdom. Now he sits on his throne, all right, and when he sits on his throne, it's in his royal house, okay? So now you can see the footprint, and now you can see our king's house, all right? But what we... Uh, determined is that once we knew that obviously his throne would be in the temple, which you see here, Esther presented herself in the inner court. So we wanted to see if we can see there the throne. I'm drawing the throne there in the temple. And now I'm drawing a line and you can see that can the king sit on his throne and look out into the inner court and see Esther? The answer is yes. So you can sit on his throne and he has a line of sight through the temple through the porch by the altar which you see here here you're on the throne and you see the throne looking out through the doors looking out through the porch looking out by the altar we can see esther she could be visible by standing under either window 
of the east gate. So it's just a way that the scriptures are being fulfilled in the Ezekiel temple through the book of Esther and, of course, Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48. So our king's house, as we've discussed, is an armory. All right, so it's an armory as well. That's what we're also going to do is describe some of the updates and things we've done to the king's house. First off, in our four towers, you can see we have two rows of windows. You can see a spiral staircase of wood, yes, typifying a DNA strand. Okay, we uh, can see that there's algum wood that was used to build the staircases in the king's house and in the temple. All right, so here as we go and look inside, now what we've done is we have updated the decorations for the wall with the whole armor of God. Okay, so in each wall, we have the uh, what we can see in Ephesians chapter 6. We have the different types of shields. We have bows and arrows. We have swords. We have trumpets. The whole armor of God in display for this Armageddon army. So the king spoils principalities and powers, makes a show of them openly, and then he issues out from his king's house the spoils, and he gives them to his army, okay? Just like the order and pattern of Shushan, okay? So again, once we look here at the side view, we also have two floors, which we have not developed, okay, but there are two additional floors to what we're looking at. That's what the two rows of windows are, as each is a level or story. Okay, so this is the king's house in the millennium. Uh, very amazing that he, his house will dwell amongst men. Okay, very, very exciting. And we believe through uh, Luke 11 and Song of Solomon, he decorates his house, okay, with the armaments with the whole armor. Now let's talk about what we see in Revelation 19. The armies which are in heaven fall in on white garments. Okay, well we can see through 1 Kings 10 that the um, fine linen is granted, okay? And then we can see that many of the other armaments there in Kings, okay? But this is what we're displaying here with the shields, okay? The spears, 600 shekels in a spear, 600 shekels in a shield, 300, okay? All of this we can find First Kings. A chariot went up for 600 shekels and a horse for 150. Again, in First Kings, describing uh, the exact price for the army. Okay, so this is Armageddon. Those that are with him in the army follow him on white horses with the whole armaments of God. Okay, and this you see in Ephesians 6 with the armaments of the foot soldiers, okay? So the foot, you get foot soldiers, you have different shields for the horses, you have different shields for the foot soldiers, all right? And this is what we're uh, placing on display, display in the whole armor of God within the king's house. Helmet salvation, breastplate of righteousness, sword of the spirit, and the trumpets, the war trumpet, okay? And we are blowing the trumpet in Zion, okay? Because now is the time of... Warfare, Armageddon, okay, in these last days to fight with the Lamb, Alpha and Omega, the Lamb on Mount Zion. So guys, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you're enjoying the series. We have actually finished the temple. We finished all the details. The temple was finished. We're very excited because in Ezra chapter 6, it says, they finished the temple on the third day of the 12th month and they kept the Hanukkah, the dedication of the house. So um, it's taken us seven months instead of seven years, but we have finished the temple. All the details of the temple are finished. Um, we do have more content to share and release, but we're uh, very excited to uh, share with you. Sometimes we may have things like this where we have updates Okay, so we're excited to share updates. In this case, the king's house, the spiral staircase, the whole armor of God. Okay, just some um, additional de uh, details, okay, that'll make sense once we get into some of the other videos. We talk about the pillars. To he who overcomes will be a pillar in the temple. All right, so we'll have a video on the pillars of the temple. We'll have other videos on the uh, temple chambers in my father's house there are many mansions 
okay? But in this one, the King's House, okay, the updates that we've done, you can go to the same link if you go lelandjones.com and then you go to what's new on the main page and you just scroll down, you'll see light blue um, links and these light blue links, they'll lead you to the different build outs of the temple. We have one that's a whole temple complex um, and then we have the several others, the gate, the boiling house, the scribes chamber, the north and south chambers. And then there's this one, the king's house and the king's house um, is now updated, okay? So you can go into that, you can see the updates, go inside and see the whole armor as we've depicted, okay? So again, lelandjones.com, what new section? Look at the blue. All right, so the voice came from the throne saying, praise our God, all you his servants that fear his name, both small and great. 